Do you want to become fluent in German quickly, but you're not sure how to get there? This is everything I did to become fluent in German in one year through self-study, aka I reached a solid B2 upper intermediate level so that I was ready to go into the advanced level C1 once I got to Germany. Now I do have a bonus tip for the end of the video, no matter what level of German you're currently at, so you want to make sure to stay till the end. So yes, I did manage to reach a level of fluency without ever having visited Germany. None of this happened overnight and learn a language quickly can vary from learner to learner about what that means, as do our life circumstances and mental states while we learn languages. This is all of my story while I was low-key struggling with depression. Keep that in mind as you listen. Now talking about German would not be complete without talking about my horrible experience in the classroom learning French. I thought that I was the worst language learner out there. I thought that I would only be capable of learning the basics in any language. I had four years of learning French with a really bad teacher. I am a huge proponent of language learning being half study and implementing the strategies that you need to whatever proficiency level you want to reach and half mindset plus managing self-talk and our own insecurities that can show up in a myriad of ways as we learn languages. For French, I lacked both a growth mindset. I had so many insecurities and I just didn't believe in myself. So I wasn't going to try and implement any sort of tips or resources that I found online anyways. So note that I went into wanting to learn German with this exact mindset. Now before college, I had traveled around a little bit with my family internationally. I wanted to be able to travel without them and I knew that I wanted to escape my problems in the United States, which obviously isn't realistic, but it never stopped me from hoping and fueling my motivation. I originally picked German because I knew Germans in my generation spoke really good English. And I thought, well, maybe if I try to speak the basics with them, say good morning, how are you, then we can just switch to English and then everything will be okay. I also heard that there were a lot of American expats in Germany already, so I thought I would also be accepted as an American if I went over there. While I cringe at the thought of just wanting to know the basics and switching to English and just how I thought about my capabilities surrounding languages back then, I'm still so thankful that all of this led me to giving German a try. In the last semester of high school, my mom bought me some really old beat up flashcards that had a lot of archaic German words on them. I'd started hearing a lot more about study abroad opportunities at the university I was about to go to. And so I thought, wow, maybe I should study abroad in Germany. So that became a really big motivation as I went through those really ancient flashcards and eventually thought, I need to turn to something else. I had no idea how to learn a language. I had no idea how to do it by myself. I just knew that I didn't want to pressure myself to learn fast because I underestimated myself so much anyways that I thought I'm gonna learn this slow anyways. So I might as well not set any expectations for myself. And I was also very detached from the outcome of reaching fluency or not when I started really learning German. And that was a big key to my overall success now that I look back on it years later. But just going back to the mentality of, oh, I'm just going to learn the basics. I switched from the flashcards and I went on the resource links for my college website under the German department. And I found the best resource that I've ever used for German, which was enthuline.com. Now I started with the grammar section worksheet, but there were so many other topics to cover like vocabulary, literary recommendations, culture, song lyrics that were transcribed. For grammar, it had everything that you needed to know in order to reach a B2 level. The teacher who is a professor at university University of Wisconsin, she really breaks down complex grammar concepts into digestible pieces of information. So you never feel overwhelmed when you are working through her worksheets. I started with that very first worksheet and went down the list with the nominative case. And this is how I discovered I really liked grammar and I really liked finding patterns within the grammar. And all of that snowballed into me wanting to go beyond the basics because I wanted to understand more complex grammar. It was just so interesting to me. Now in that last semester of high school, my fourth class of the day was a study hall that was dedicated to finishing homework before you had to go home. I opted to just do all of my other homework for my classes at home and use that fourth class to sit at the same computer with the same exact resource for going through those grammar worksheets of enthuline and working through through that 30 minutes per day without fail. It was at the same time, same location. With that consistency, even though that class was already a part of my day anyways, I didn't understand how effective it was at maintaining consistency and make sure I studied German at least five times a week. I was also on a budget as a student, so I loved going to the library anyways and went to the German section one day, picked up Living Language Beginner to Intermediate course with these CDs and started reviewing some of what I learned in the worksheets in that same book. At this point, I was not working 
planning on speaking with anyone. I am still a very big introvert. And back then I was super, super shy, totally scared of people. But I came up with a way to start talking to myself before I talked with an actual person. With the grammar worksheets that I was working through every day, I discovered that by reading aloud the exercise and then mentally filling in the gap word phrase in my head with what was needed instead of just reading it and putting it down on a piece of paper. Not only did it get me speaking, but it really activated the case system that German has that can be a struggle if you don't know how to actively implement it. For example, after doing a few warm-up exercises with the grammar concept that I actively wanted to practice, Enthuline usually has grammar worksheets for extra practice, and so I would go to those. I would not read any of the sentences beforehand. I would read all of it aloud, and in that moment, try and fill in the blank as best I could. So I would say, Claudia, fährst du in den Sommerferien nach Hamburg zu deiner Tante? And of course, it would take me a longer time to fish around my head and think about which prepositions I needed and what place. Sometimes I would also have to refer back to the original worksheet that explained a particular grammar concept, but I would do those exercises again once I was in the same place, same time the next day, and usually feel a lot more comfortable with it even after just a day of reading those exercises out loud. Only then would I write down my answers and read them back. So hands down, this is the best way that I've used to activate that grammar in my head and start actively using it. That is how I got really comfortable with all these German cases. It did not happen as fast as I explained it. It took months of repetitive practice and consistency, but eventually I was more comfortable with realizing them in my own speech and recognizing when native speakers, whenever I would look at a YouTube video, would use them as well. Now to really make sure I got my grammar down as time went on, I started using Quizlet, writing down example sentences with each grammar case. So nominative, dative, accusative, and genitive. I would put this all in a flashcard deck and would hit play and repeat. And I would listen to this flashcard deck over and over and over as I went through campus on a walk or did a small commute into town, etc. Until it just became second nature to understand how the cases were working in that sentence. I did the same thing with any vocabulary word that I didn't want to forget and put it in a separate Quizlet flashcard set. Now I started to branch out into more resources at this point. I still wasn't in college yet. I had a lot more motivation to improve my German and just see where it went. So I started subscribing to Learn with Oliver. Their newsletter came daily to me and they also have a system of spaced repetition flashcards. But what I really liked was that their daily newsletter was always a reminder. Make sure I review my words of the previous day for about five minutes in the morning. Whenever I saw a new word or forgot a word on the list that they gave me in the newsletter, I would immediately look it up and write it down in my flashcard notes. And then in thinking about, you know, how do I do my best on this proficiency test? I had to go through the process of self-reflection. I had to wonder, grammar worksheets and textbooks are great, but what about actually producing the language with an actual person. I was scared of making mistakes, even though my flashcards were on repeat in my head all the time, but I needed somewhere to produce the language because I knew that eventually in whatever class I got accepted into for my university, I would have to learn to speak in front of people. Also, I did want to make sure that my listening was as good as my speaking because I didn't want to be at the level that I was for 10 years with French, which was I understand everything really well, but I cannot speak. At that point, I went on HelloTalk and LanguageExchange.org to find different language partners. Now, I also went on Omegle, that was back in, what, 2017, to filter by the language and then get to talk with Germans who are also using the chat room. Obviously had to sort through all of the creeps on there, but once I got to an actual person that was worth my time, I enjoyed speaking. And as I have honed my proficiency in speaking, I have discovered that some of the people I talk to fall into a few categories. Now, one of those categories is obviously teachers and tutors will give you all the time you need to formulate your ideas. Second group would be non-teachers. And under that, there would be natives who would be empathetic and trying to help you with what you wanted to say. There would be natives who would lose patience with you and didn't care that you were learning. And then there were natives who weren't teachers, but were willing to help you reformulate what you wanted to say and genuinely enjoy talking to you. Like you don't feel like you're a burden on them when you're learning. And they'll even let you in on the slang of the language. That group is what I found the most on Omegle, just going through the chat rooms. I would usually use the video and audio feature, but it did give me the spontaneous feeling of talking to someone, even though I knew that I could exit 
at any time, of course, and I wasn't there physically with them. Also would know I would never have to see them again in case I made a really embarrassing mistake or something like that. Needless to say, I got really, really good at introducing myself considering the amount of people you pass by in those chat room settings. I also created a system for speaking to myself whenever native speakers went around or when I wasn't on Omegle or when I just didn't feel like doing grammar worksheets all the time. I set a timer for 10 minutes. I picked out a topic I was already passionate about and I would ramble and imagine just talking to my best friend. And then I proceeded to do said rambling until the timer went off. I would then write down any phrases that I had trouble expressing. I would add those expressions into my flashcards at the end of the small speaking session. And moving about day to day, I started to also ask myself, what am I not doing that native speakers are? They talk to themselves in their native language all the time. So I tried to mimic that. I was between a low and high intermediate speaker at that point. And so I would force myself think about what I wanted to say in German all the time in my head. And while it never got super easy, it did get better and less intimidating the more that I worked through everything myself. I also found just YouTubers who are really big in Germany for their comedy stunts and overall entertainment channels in general, which is usually what I wouldn't watch, but I enjoyed learning the slang and how English and German were combined by these speakers in my generation. Some of my favorites were Lesa Luca and Julian Bim. And then I started looking at different songs that were included in the top 100 Germany list for the radio. Once I dived into one song, I went down a rabbit hole, found some other great singers that I liked, and I literally memorized all of the text. I listened to them so, so much. But my favorite artist will always be Johas. So at that point in my studies, I was immersing myself in as much listening as I could from authentic speakers. I was trying to talk to myself a lot more, still relying on Omegle instead of a regular language partner to get my speaking in. And I felt that I was doing as much as I could up to this point to do my best on the proficiency exam. So I went in to take the exam. I got placed into an advanced literature class where they do not teach you any of the language. You are expected to read, write, and speak it at a upper intermediate level. And I was scared and surprised because most of the students had already had about three years of college German and they most likely had had the language in high school too. So I was very intimidated, but I also wanted to impress them at the same time, just being that little first year student. I was also super inspired by how well they spoke in German. I had class with the rest of the students two times a week for my very first semester in college. I swear, I translated every single word in my <laughs> college textbook for the reading passages. I'm not even kidding. It really helped though that I had a really encouraging German professor that whole time who obviously did believe in me. And this German professor held Café Stunde every Friday. Now I know in different language communities, there's a lot of talk of, I love speaking with native speakers. But in my case, I loved speaking with non-native speakers who were a few levels above me, but they still made their mistakes sometimes. They still sometimes had a small accent. And just noticing what would probably be perceived as imperfections and not ideal if you wanted to reach an advanced level in German, that still got me inspired and it humanized these speakers a bit more so that I then felt more confident as a lower intermediate speaker and even trying to initiate more conversation with them. There were some set phrases that you learn in every language and I would hear what these more advanced non-native speakers would say at the Café Stunde and I could easily memorize them because I remember their face and who they were and how they said the expressions. So that was a nice bonus of going to those sessions. I also remembered the mistakes that they made and how they were corrected. Eventually, seeing that others were not perfect, but still went out of their way to talk to native international students who came to visit us, I was inspired to do the same thing. As I said before in the beginning, I was very depressed during this very first semester and pretty much the whole first year of college. My motivation to go abroad grew even more because I eventually believed I could escape this kind of depression that I was living in from day to day and that language learning was ultimately helping me manage to just push myself to get through the day. So really forcing myself into new challenges like getting into a high level German class, attempting to use a new phrase, going through the countless moments of uncertainty when learning a language and standing up to those challenges time and time again, leading by my own curiosity, that was my true driving force for German. And after my struggle with French, I could not believe what I was capable of doing in German. So in February of my first year, the German department of my university always had what's called a Sprachwochenende. Essentially, you would go on a retreat for the weekend with the rest of your classmates. We would all stay in a cabin and we would talk in German the whole time. That meant listening to movies in German, serving our food, going on hikes, playing games, 
and it was happening one year after I started learning German with the Enthulin grammar worksheets. So it was all coming full circle at that time, and the way that I knew that I had reached an upper intermediate level of fluency, especially in speaking, I could conduct myself with any situation that was given to me, especially with native speakers. They had told me how close my accent was to a native speakers in German. I could stay in German the whole time, and I even knew vocabulary that the older students sometimes didn't even know. I had also roomed with one of the international students from Austria, so I could even talk German in our dorm rooms together. That was one of the most satisfying weeks that I think I will ever have in all of my years of language learning. Now, after Sprachwochenende ended, I found that my motivation for German began to wane a little bit just because my depression was hitting me a lot harder. And after returning, I had found out I got accepted to a study abroad program in Italy, and it would come right before I was supposed to leave for Germany. So again, I had a new language and a new culture that I wanted to prioritize to get ready for that experience. And after this, I actually took a break from German for about seven months. And also my success with German inspired me to think I could accomplish the same thing in Italian before I actually went abroad. So it wasn't until I really got back from Italy that I tried to brush up on my German again. I immersed myself in German, language exchanges through Hello Talk. I talked to myself as much as I could. I listened to series, signed up for as many German classes as my class schedule would allow in college, and listening to the German YouTuber so I could really get that authentic sound of the language. Given I did not have any financial or familial responsibilities at the time, so that was definitely a big advantage for why I could immerse myself so heavily during that summer between when I returned from Italy and when I left for Germany. But the ultimate achievement I had was actually buying a full audiobook in German. It was Girl on the Train, but completely translated. And I remember listening to a bit of that every single night before going to bed, and I could listen to it without any sort of dictionary. That was truly when I knew in my heart that I was ready for my study abroad experience, ready for any spontaneous situation that could come my way, and really trust that even though I may not have had all of the exact vocab, I knew to trust myself enough to talk around any situation that I needed. My adventures, of course, did not stop there. I had tons of failures and disappointments in both German and Italian, and I disclose a lot more of that in my Language Wellness and Identity podcast, which you can also find on Spotify. Spotify. The link to check it out is in the description below. Find me also on Patreon, where you will get an even more in-depth look at a lot of my language journey that I was not proud of, but give actionable advice on how to navigate those really negative feelings that I think a lot of us tend to ignore when we are on the high of learning a language and chasing our endless accomplishments. All of my journey was a lot messier than how it appears in this video. So the main takeaways that helped me become fluent in German quickly, number one, I had a clear purpose from the beginning. This helped me determine where I needed to start, but more importantly, it helped me to keep going. Learning a foreign language is demanding. It takes time, no matter what you may see on the internet. Number two, I stuck to my resources consistently and I didn't get distracted, especially at the beginning. Overwhelm of resources is a big factor. We're taking more time to absorb information and loading ourselves up with even more to learn is not really going to help us until we get to an intermediate level where we can process our language faster and apply more. Number three is I started with grammar as soon as I knew I wanted to become fluent in German. German is more of a grammatical language than Spanish, for example. So if you really want to get past the low intermediate stage in German, you really want to cultivate your understanding of the German case system because that is the foundation of everything else you will encounter, especially in the upper intermediate levels. I also had a wonderful mentor who was my German professor. Sometimes they come into your life. Sometimes you're going to have to seek them out through tandems, taking a class, Class, networking, etc. But I really advise you to search for one because it'll make all the difference in your learning if you have the resources to someone on the sidelines believing in you the whole time. Now keep in mind your mindset as well as your circumstances that might differ from mine. As I said before, learning a language as an adult is half strategy application and half mindset. And being kind to yourself, especially when you have the perception that someone is doing something better than you are, learning faster than you are. And I'll tell you right now, I was a student with no money, but I also had no debt. I had energy I could devote to my studies whenever I wanted to with a lot less responsibility in general. I got to take literature classes at a private university in the United States, and I was 
surrounded by others who were better than me, but also encouraged me. And I know not everyone is going to always have this advantage of being surrounded and supported by their network. Also too, I actually wanted to learn the language. And I know some of us are in a way forced because of our life circumstances to learn a language. So the definite urge and desire that I had laying the foundation for me to skyrocket my progress with German definitely played a huge role in that. Also to put this in perspective, it took me 10 years to reach the same level speaking in French that I attained in German in one year. So your mindset and putting things into perspective is crucial to staying true to your own journey, still practicing self-compassion with yourself, not wishing you were having my language journey or someone else's. Also bonus tip, if you are searching for more resources currently, make sure you check out this video for a complete guide to free German resources at every level. Again, please keep your well-being in mind as you continue with your language journey. Make sure to comment what your experience has been with learning German. Remember, your language learning story matters no matter where you are on your journey. Be kind, be vulnerable, be gentle to yourself when things don't go as planned. Lead always with curiosity and you're going to be very presently surprised where your language learning can take you. That's it for today, everyone. See you next time.